video covers conveyor skirt board systems, how to calculate the friction that they cause, and how to calculate the power required to overcome that friction. Conveyor skirt board systems are used to contain material as it is transferred from one point onto a moving conveyor. The material is intended to be stabilized within the trough in the skirt zone. Normally, the skirt zone length, LB, is short compared with the overall length of the conveyor because the purpose is to contain the material and stabilize it within the trough. Sometimes it's necessary to fully skirt a conveyor because either the conveyor has multiple loading points or for some reason or another the material will not stabilize within the trough. Let's take a look at the cross section through this area. Section AA shows material within the skirt board zone. You can see two important things featured here. One is the area which depicts the material as it rubs against the skirt board material, normally steel. And the other is the area where the skirt board seal system rubs on the conveyor belt. An important dimension here is HS, the depth of the material within the skirt zone. This is the depth of the material as it rubs against the skirt board. The two components of friction that we need to figure out how to calculate are material frictional drag and skirt board seal drag. To calculate material frictional drag within a skirt board system, we can use the equation shown here. This has been developed by the Conveyor Equipment Manufacturers Association, who has also published a list of frictional coefficients which can be used for a variety of materials. In this example, we're going to move iron ore. So, to calculate frictional drag from the material rubbing against the skirt board, we simply multiply the frictional coefficient times the length of the skirt board times the square of the material depth within the skirt zone. Material is iron ore. In this example, we will assume that the skirt board is made from steel, which is very typical. Sigma gives us a frictional coefficient of 0.276. For the example, we'll assume that the length of the zone is 15 feet and the depth of material within that zone is 4 inches. Here's how we calculate the drag. 0.276 times 15 for 15 feet long times 4 squared since the depth of material is 4 inches. This gives us Point two seven six times 15 times 16 or 66 pounds. We have now calculated the material frictional drag in this particular example. Now let's calculate material frictional drag within the skirt board for a different material. We'll use wood chips as our material. SEMA gives us a frictional coefficient of 0 0.01 for wood chips. To calculate the drag, we use the same equation as before. 0 0.01 times 15, because the skirt board length is the same as before, times 16, because the depth of material is the same as before. This yields a result of 2.4 pounds. Notice that the frictional coefficient of iron ore is 27.6 times higher than that for wood chips. Therefore, the drag is 27.6 times higher, 66 pounds compared with 2.4 pounds. So now we've been able to calculate one of the two components of skirt board system drag. SEMA gives a list of frictional coefficients to make it convenient to do this analysis. For example, bituminous Coal has a frictional coefficient of 0.075, limestone has a frictional coefficient of 0.128, and salt has a frictional coefficient of 0.081. Now let's examine how sensitive the results are to the material depth. 
We're going to keep all the parameters the same as before in the iron ore case, except we're going to set the depth of material equal to 8 inches, 8 inches instead of 4 inches. Now our drag becomes 0 0.276 times 15 times 8 squared, which equals 0.276 times 15 times 64, which gives us a result of 265 pounds. Notice that when the iron ore has a depth of 8 inches instead of 4 inches in the zone, the frictional drag from the material equals 265 pounds instead of 66 pounds. That's because the result is proportional to the square of the ratio of the depths. In other words, 8 divided by 4 equals 2. 2 squared is 4. Therefore, this result is 4 times this result. If we were to compare the results of a 3-inch depth of material versus a 9-inch depth of material, notice that 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3 squared is 9. That would give us a frictional drag here 9 times larger than here. Now let's turn our attention to calculating skirt seal drag. A variety of flexible seals are available on the market, and these include vertical, perpendicular, oblique, parallel, and the so-called contactless skirt seal system. SEMA provides uh, this equation to calculate uh, seal drag for conventional seals, and they recommend using a value of 3 pounds per foot of seal. Uh, looking at our example of the 15-foot skirt zone, seal drag simply becomes 6 times 15 or 90 pounds. That's 3 pounds per foot of board times 2 boards times a board length of 15 feet, 90 pounds of seal drag. Having calculated material friction drag and skirt seal system drag, we are now in a position to calculate total drag and therefore the power required to overcome this friction. Remembering that we are thinking of an example of moving iron ore <coughs> with a frictional coefficient of 0.276 with a skirt board length of 15 feet and a material depth of 4 inches, we have a material frictional drag of 66 pounds and a conventional rubber seal will yield a drag value of 90 pounds. Combining these frictions, we come up with a total drag value of 156 pounds. Since we now know the total drag of the skirt board system, we can calculate the drive power required to overcome that friction. We know that belt pull times belt speed equals the required power. And we know that our belt pull is 156 pounds. Let's say in our example we have a belt speed of 600 feet per minute. We multiply those two numbers and we get a product of 93,600 foot-pounds per minute. Now how do we convert that to a useful unit of measure? Well, we know that one horsepower equals 33,000 foot-pounds per minute. So simply dividing 93,600 by 33,000 we determined that the power required to overcome the skirt board system drag is 2.8 horsepower. So if our conveyor system was relatively small and the total drive was 10 horsepower, 2.8 horsepower is a significant part of that drive power requirement. On the other hand, if our conveyor is quite long, say requiring a drive value of 300 horsepower, 2.8 horsepower is relatively insignificant compared with the total power required in that system. 
We hope you found this short tutorial useful. For more tips on conveyor design and maintenance, go to RomecaCorp.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much.